with this. Um, we've established a, a working London Student Assembly, as we've already mentioned, and we are now looking at um, widening this out to doing national student assemblies and national <coughs> assemblies with people that aren't students or other people from the movements. That's one way that we're going to go forward, and no doubt um, further occupations, direct actions against um, shops to, to, to highlight the hypocrisy of these, these businesses, you know, evading tax, £6 billion tax, um, as the Vodafone bill is. Um, and a, a whole series of uh, actions. We can report more about that as and when they come up. We can't predict them, obviously. And we're also looking at doing a Europe-wide student uh, assembly in um, February. Yeah, I mean, these, I think what we've seen this so far this year has been a very good warm-up for what's going to have to happen in the future. And we will um, absolutely keep going. These cuts aren't just an attack on education or on people in education. Um, you know, they're an attack on ordinary working people everywhere. They're an attack on anybody who needs to use a council house. They're an attack on anybody who needs to use the NHS, who needs to use public services. Um, yeah, it, it's absolutely to broader population, to trade union action, to mass strike action, um, to national walkouts on a bigger and bigger scale. Um, and, and what we managed to do as a movement this side of Christmas is set in stone, and well not set in stone, but set in, in motion the structures in terms of the London Student Assembly and the National Student Assembly um, and broader organising patterns that we can then use and transpose um, onto a much bigger movement next term. Um, and that won't just be students. Um, you're going to see millions and millions of people uh, involved in this kind of Have you been given any indication by the police whether they will let you get to Parliament Square? We've read a room that takes us into public school. No, no, but have they, have they given you any indication that that will be allowed? Uh, well, not, not be able to agree the route that goes into public square. Okay, but they've signed off on that. They've signed off on a, on a route that ends up in Parliament Square. Uh, it goes to Parliament Square. It goes to square. Parliament Square. Sure. And then away from it. Yeah, I mean, the information that I've seen from the Met is that it goes through Parliament yeah. Square down to Victoria yeah. Embankment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Right, sure. But I mean, I mean, the symbolic thing that we're calling on is a march on Parliament, because yeah. that's obviously what the march is about. Is there going to be any um, strategy from you guys in terms of how the march will go? I mean, are you going to be saying to people here, we need to march on mass if we're going to reduce the chance of getting kept in? I mean, if people start branching off into smaller groups, which has been the case in the past, the police may well use that as an excuse to limit um, access points and, and contain them. Um, are you going to be giving any any kind of guidance at the rally here to people about you know staying on mass and staying on the roof? It's almost impossible to kettle twenty or thirty thousand people, and we're 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 you know keeping together is obviously an important thing. Um, we'll be also having quite a lot of stewards out on the day. Um, we'll be briefing those. We've given guidance to the police that they should not be uh, detaining us, containing us at earlier stages in the <coughs> demonstration. What's happened in the pr previous? few weeks is that we've done feeder marches from New Loop and we've been prevented from um, taking the route that we had already agreed with them. Um, so we were prevented, uh, we were contained on the Strand which left thousands and thousands of young students at Trafalgar Square waiting for the demonstration to arrive to join us um, and then not, you know, unsure of what was happening and then sort of took actions into their own hands and this I place the responsibility fully um, on the, on the police, this is the day that we were kettled for nine hours and they blame the students, we blame them for preventing the march from going ahead peacefully. So will there be um, communication between march organisers and police via mobile and things on the day or is that something that you're not prepared to kind of we'll do? Be, will the A's? Yes, yeah, certainly right. the A's. Okay. I, I, I think, I mean... This, this sort of this mobilisation of students is far bigger and beyond anything that's happened for quite a, for quite a few years, and it's a learning process for us as well. And every time we get um, attacked by the police, we learn lessons rapidly and know how to deal with them more effectively the next time. And so, to give an example, you know, people, you know, thousands of people get kettled in Whitehall. Um, well, they're not going to have that again. So, what you end up with on the 20, 24th is a massive kettling in Whitehall where children as young as 12 are being kept for nine hours 
in the freezing cold and have to kind of li people literally burning their exercise books to keep warm and then having to report that to um, teachers. To, to teachers the next day. It's not like it the London student run. It's not like the dog ate it. Um, I had to burn it to keep warm. Um, and, you know, funniness aside, that's appalling. You know, it's appalling to keep uh, children in a kettle for nine hours. Um, and so what you saw on the 30th as a response to that six days later, on the next day of action, was people just totally unwilling to be kettled and sort of a massive romp all the way around central London. So the protests are evolving um, and are adapting to, you know, you know, pretty brutal police tactics. On the point that you made about the kind of cynical preemptive criminalisation, um, while well, you know, while that point stands, are you concerned that there is the potential for um, a, a kind of a, a, a more more active element to to cause problems for the wider march? I mean, having been in the last two, um, that certainly felt towards the media a much more aggressive attitude. There's a lot of kind of people pulling cables out the back of cameras, trying to um, you know knock over camera and that kind of mm. thing. There, there's a marked difference. Mm. Um, does that concern you as organisers of this wider march and this wider campaign? Mm. Well, we're obviously going to have more stewards on the on the demonstration um, on Thursday, so as we can um, uh, ensure our right to protest and uh, um, and make sure that that goes smoothly. Um, I think it's. However, we have to be clear, it's very understandable that there are a lot of young people on these demonstrations who are, you know, feel completely alienated um, from, um, you know, what's going on around them and, and the country they're growing up in. And, um, I mean, obviously the attacks on cameramen, this is the best I've heard of it, but, I mean, if it did happen, then that's... Well, no, I'm not calling them attacks. I okay. said a lot of, kind of, it was aggressive behaviour, it was kind of... Okay. Pulling the cables out the back thing. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, blood and all that kind of thing. okay. Well, um, um, obviously that's uh, that's um, un, you know uh, unfortunate behaviour, and uh, um, but I mean we have to also understand that um, a lot of young people are going on these demonstrations feel that the media hasn't portrayed them in a very sympathetic light, for instance, and so I think there's uh, um, I think there's a certain um, cynicism towards the media itself on some of these demonstrations because because Do you think that cynicism is helpful to your cause. Uh, well, I think it's understandable because yeah, I, because I, 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 I get it. Some yes, yes, but, it's helpful. Well, but like I don't think the way the media has portrayed some of the protests has been helpful. Actually, like that's the wider problem. I mean, th their reaction to the fact that thousands of people go on a demonstration, um, and then when they go to school the next day, in the next day's papers, all there, all there is is a couple of images of you know some vandalism here and there. And for a lot of students, that doesn't speak for really what they're. You know, like how like how they interpret the movement and experience it. So, um, but you know, so I think that's sort of, uh, you know, I think that's why people are reacting in that way. Mark, which paper are you from? I'm from Sky News. Yeah, no surprise that you have had um, people pull out your camera and things. I must say, um, the way the Daily Mail has portrayed young women who are protesting is sexist. The way that uh, other papers have portrayed young black people protesting is racist. I think that the way that the media has embarked on a witch hunt, publishing photos of, of student protesters, um, is, has caused to a witch hunt against students, it has caused a general uh, cry of fear amongst the student population, because what is, has become increasingly clear is that the coalition is impotent, politically impotent to push through the cuts to increase tuition fees by troubling tuition, tuition fees and has to resort to methods in collaboration with the media, in collaboration with the police in order to stifle the student protest. It didn't look like uh, Sarah Turner did.